Good evening, everybody out there in Chester County and on my Facebook page, coming to you straight live on City Town Talk is none other than me, Brother Fonz. Now, before we get started, I'm going to just lean my head so you can see, vote like your rights depend on it. This ain't nobody playing with y'all. It is real serious. So this evening, I know this is going to be hard. It's Throwback Thursday. I know that. And we got a whole lot of stuff going on. First of all, tonight's guest is State Representative Dan K. Williams. Next, the Eagles come on at 820. Oh, Lord, y'all pray for my squad. And then at 9 o'clock, we got none other than the presidential debate. My head hurts. I don't know what I'm going to do. But this is so exciting. I got some lifesavers. I got some snacks. And we just going to ride this thing. Like we're going to ride like we can't ride it no more. Now, look, I want y'all to hang in there. Now, wait a minute. Before I get really, really started, y'all know the drill. Let's make sure... Let's make sure that we can get uh, this video up so we can talk to some people, get some uh, some highs and some lows. Uh, of course, this is filler time, what I'm doing, so, <laughs> so I can get this up. So, oh, there you go. Somebody got us. Donna Newswan's got us. Taylor Pulliam. Hey, Taylor, how you doing this evening? Taylor, Donna, do I have a show for you to... This evening, we're going to talk, we're going to talk some politics. Y'all know I'm partisan, so I don't want no trouble. So don't act like, you know, you know, Pastor, sometimes they say, well, well, why don't you have the other party on your show? No, because this isn't a public funded institution. This is my show. That's so, right. <laughs> so that's how I do that thing. First of all, are you ready for the big debate this evening? I'm about as ready as I'm going to be. And Fonz, let me start by saying thank you for the opportunity to be on City Limits, uh, City Talk. I appreciate it and I love the forum and thank you for having me. Am I ready for the debate? I think it takes two people to debate and the incumbent president is not given to discussion or debate. So I'd love it if there were a real robust conversation around policy. I think the only debater that comes has been uh, the opponents. This is a president who is not open to more than bullying his opponents and forcing his views on people as the only views. He's not open to conversation. He's not open to real discussion and doing a deeper dive into the policy issues. And it's why he's not presidential. He's a reality show host uh, with a title. And so this debate tonight, I'd love it to be one of substance. I don't know that it will be. And I'm gonna add this. Four and a half years, and I'm speaking personally now, four and a half years, I've seen just about everything I need to see from the incumbent. Mm -hmm. If there are people who are undecided voters, God bless them, uh, I'm not one of them. So there's <laughs> not much that would uh, to move me, all right? Mm -hmm. Hey, look, I wanna say, give a shout out to Sissy Dishields. My pew partner, she said, hey, Pastor Rep. Dan, you don't even know what to call him. You got both of his titles. All right. And she already saying it's true. Charles hey. Dickinson. <laughs> Charles Dickinson say good evening as well, Pastor Dan. Hey, look, word on the street is you was hanging out with our ex-president yesterday. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Exciting time down at Citizens Bank Park. Um, myself and uh, some members of the team and other representatives were there for what was a challenge and an inspiring talk to remind us of where we've come from uh, and to deal with the issues of policy that affect people uh, most profoundly. So from healthcare to the issues of voter suppression, uh, former President Obama laid down the, the gauntlet on why we need to be participants in this election, what is at stake, and given the climate of where we are today, uh, that's not something that we should have to um, raise the volume on, and yet it is necessary. So it was a great time being in the Citizens Bar Park, Citizens Bank Park, with car and a DJ, and to add the icing on the cake, uh, the smooth, and I mean very smooth, President Barack Obama challenged the socks off every single one of us. It was a great day. I love the fact that he talks in complete sentences and paragraphs and everything, man. I was like, whoa, yes, yes. Hey, but look, before we go any further, because people must know you on, because they're they coming in now. Let me see who we got here.
We got Barbara Lowe from the library. Hey, Barb, she's one of our uh, volunteers. Love her to death. Kia Tony and Abdella Hawa, Chris Urban, Karen Wise Griffey. And Ramsey Coulter is watching. Hey, look, I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, uh, but now do me a favor. Y'all share this because your friends might not be my friends. So, like, to make this thing be widespread, because that's what we got to do. Share it on your page and on your post. And screw your wigs on real tight, because we got some more questions. Now, let me see what I got next. All right, look. This is what we always hear on the streets. You know, I'm a social media fanatic, right? Uh, my vote don't count. Why should I vote? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, you know what I be saying. But I think they need to hear from you because they must don't believe I know what I'm talking about. Tell us why the vote is important. Well, let's do this. First, look at the attempt to suppress the vote. And usually when you look at the, the, the extreme measures to suppress something, it tells you the value of the vote. Hmm. Now, voting is still one of the biggest, I would say almost a single door to change we have. It's not the only door, but it's one of the biggest doorways to change we have voting. If you look at some of the voter suppression tactics that are taking place, it gives you a better understanding of why this is such a critical moment and why there are forces that don't want you to vote. Now people raise the question, why should I vote? Well, almost every program, almost every problem in every system that we have is the result of some policy choice. So if you're concerned about college costs, if you're concerned about health care, if you're concerned about the minimum wage, if you're concerned about uh, a host of things, voting is the way we access change to all of these issues. So when you're voting for your senators and your state representatives, uh, they can move legislation forward to advance funding for schools. They can move legislation forward to help in the areas of minimum wages, health care, vote because your very life is shaped by policy choices that are made legislatively. That's why we need to vote. Give me my head one more time. Vote like your rights depend on it. Bam. And I have another thing too. Sure, because, sure. You know, I said to you that voting is the biggest doorway to change. All due respect to my brother, Colin Kaepernick, who suggested not voting is a kind of protest. That's wrong. We need to vote. And voting is going to shape not just the lives of the people in this generation, it's going to shape the lives of those in generations to come. Because keep in mind that the Supreme Court justices that are elected to the bench are elected for life. Mm. And mm. so voting becomes a critical component. If you're concerned about police brutality, well, then you ought to vote uh, specifically for council people who directly address the issues of the local police department. If you're concerned for increased wages throughout the state, vote for senators and legislators who have something to do with raising the minimum wage. On and on we could go, but this is why voting is so central, so important, and why forces that realize the importance of voting work overtime to suppress the vote. Oh man, we were talking about this all night long. We must around go straight through the debate, but look, now I'm gonna spin off of that because you said so much good stuff there. If our vote didn't count, why would they spend millions of dollars, take mailboxes off the corner, disassemble <laughs> post office machines, do all the dazzling stuff, give one ballot box in Texas for like 4 million people, man. It's right in front of our face. But see, we still playing checkers and they playing chess. Hey, listen, not just chess, 3D chess. 3D, that's what it's I'm talking just, about. Look at uh, the late, listen, right now, the administration is 0-3. They've lost three major cases in Pennsylvania that they could not win in order to suppress the vote. When you start to consider that voting now, this is what I want people to really understand. Voting is no longer just one day. So, uh -huh. so look at November 3rd as the day to vote. 
the voting season is taking place right now. Millions in our country and millions in our Commonwealth have already voted. The other thing I wanna to say to that is begin now to think of how important your vote is from the bottom up on the ballot, not from the top down. Typically we have voted from a top down perspective, but in Pennsylvania, straight ticket voting is no longer permissible. So what you have to understand is that voting the bottom of the ticket up is much more important to the things that impact your life and my life. And while yes, there's a presidential election taking place, if we don't get the down ballot races that we need, it won't matter who the president is. And this is the story Barack Obama had when he was elected as the first African-American president. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, let, let, me, let me speak to some people who tuned in. Ramsey, yes, indeed, I see you. Michelle Timmons, Shannon, Iris, Priscilla Bryant, it's good to see you. Who else I got? Hans Van Moe, I know that guy any place. Look, but before I go, because as you talk, I got to get away from my list because there's some stuff. Now, people want to know, we're going to talk about what you do as a state rep, but people don't realize what you guys do behind the scenes. Uh, you do more than just <laughs> driver's license and all that kind of stuff because there are forces up there in Harrisburg who stay up all night long trying to figure out how to steal our voices and take our rights. Let's kind of like delve into some of them things that they were trying to push those lawsuits as far as voting and suppression. Let's break that down so we can see it. Well, you talked about a little bit of it earlier. There was this lawsuit against drop boxes. I mean, what, 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 what do you have against drop boxes? You have a mailbox, drop box, they're as secure. But there were forces marshaled against drop boxes in the state of Pennsylvania. Then you've had the poll watcher debate. This was coming out of HR 1032, uh, a resolution that would have allowed men and women from out of the district, out of your locale to come and watch polls, which was nothing more than a move to intimidate voters. <clears throat> Excuse me, think about this. You would have had people driving in by the bus loads, especially in states like Pennsylvania, with the sole purpose of intimidating people at the polls. Can you imagine people standing at the polls or somewhere near the polls or removed to some safer place, but watching with uh, AR-15s on their shoulder to just intimidate voters. So in the last several weeks, we've been able to go uh, win three strategic cases that would have added to the attempt to suppress the vote. And I also add this, in HR 1032, it would have meant that the process of counting ballots was slowed that commissioners and supervisors would have been subject to subpoena, which would have meant we might never have known who would have won elections and ultimately those decisions be left over to state legislatures. This is not checkers, it's not chess, it's 3D chess. And we've got to understand this. You heard it straight from State Representative Dan K. Williams, and he's behind the scenes, so he knows what he's talking about. So y'all got to understand what our reps are doing. Man, that they're mean force, and they're fighting, and, and they're uh, the minority party. So you know how hard they're fighting as a minority party? Man, but look. Before now, I I, any, yeah, go ahead. That, listen, because I've been brought back, we have been brought back, Democrats have been brought, brought back, to the legislature on 24 hour notice to do virtually um, nothing to address the pandemic, to address PPE, hazard pay, sick leave, childcare, raising the minimum wage. And you have the most active legislature in the nation, in the Pennsylvania legislature. Oh, yeah. And you majority party has on more than one occasion brought us back to do virtually nothing because they have not wanted to address the most prominent and pressing issues that men and women are facing in light of COVID-19. And so this is what's taking place in spaces that 
you people understand. It is politics writ large. It is a contact sport, but it's why we need the support of the people in all of these enterprises. And vote, vote for all the elections. Don't just vote for the presidential election, man. I'm telling you, uh, I'm not going to get in that. Hey, look. Good evening, Brian McGinnis, Juan Jonez, Lanisha Johnson. It is good to see you, Sister Valeria. That question is on my list, and I'm going to get him with it. Iris says, thank you, State Rep. Dan Williams, for all you do for 74th. Han says, but we can flip the Pennsylvania out. You know what? Uh, I don't know. What is it called? 530? What? It's one of them polling joints. They say that's looking pretty good about the Pennsylvania State House. It's getting better and better. Anyway, I need to shut up. Okay, uh, yeah, Hans said it's now rated as a toss-up. Yeah, Hans, that's what I was looking at. Jay D'Angelo is, is watching Alice Taylor-Jones. It's good to see you. And Brian said, Dan, the man, let's, let's take this on further. I hope I don't keep you too long. I hope you got your, your DVR in the debate or something, because we got some questions. You ready for me? My pastor got ready? the best smile in the world to me. He made me look at my team and say, man, what's wrong with my mouth? But anyway, here we go. I often hear people talk, okay, I don't even need this for that one. You often hear people say about picking the lesser of two evils. Okay, they go back to uh, Biden's crime bill back in the 70s or whatever, and they use that as an excuse. <laughs> not, <laughs> in other words, I'm gonna cut off my nose to spite my face because talk to us about that and tell us what kind of senses that make. Talk some logic to these people that's listening. In my view, it doesn't make any sense at all, because once again, this is why not voting is not a manifestation of protest. Um, when you look at, for instance, the 1994 crime bill, I think if you listen to the vice president, there were things in it that even he has said he would have changed. All right. But this is the problem when you are a single issue voter. Mm. You look beyond just a single issue and look at the broader perspectives of policy because everything that's taking place in our culture and everything that affects you and I is conflated. What do I mean when I say that? There are issues around education. There are issues around economics. There are issues around the environment. These are concentric circles that affect all of us. There is no one single issue that should make anybody say, I'm not going to vote. In fact, I don't know if there's ever been a single candidate that you've agreed with in totality. So mm -hmm. to uh, a 1994 vote and claim that as the reason for sitting out the election, well, keep in mind, I said to you earlier, that this is an election that is not just top down, it has to be bottom up. You're looking at state races in the Pennsylvania assembly. If we can flip, if we can win nine seats, and keep the incumbents that we have, we can transition the power structure of the legislature if people will vote down ballot. So the idea stuck in just one framework of the presidential election is misguided, inappropriate at best. And I would argue, um, well, I think I've made the point. Yeah, I think you did. Hey, Mr. Hammond, it is so good to see you. And Eric White just checked in. It's good to see, it's good to see all y'all on here tonight. Hey, hey, look, if you got any questions, by all means, pose your questions. I will ask the state rep the question in real time so you can get your answers. Don't forget to share this video. I want this thing to go wide. I want it to go viral. So y'all got me? Hit that share button. Like is good, but sharing is even better. Now, let me see what else. I got so many questions. Okay, so we answered that. You already talked about the importance of local elections. Now, mm -hmm. y'all, local is what's happening. That's what really, really affects us uh, in our pocketbook almost immediately. So y'all got to stop playing and coming out every four years. That's why, pa uh, Pastor, President Obama didn't have all the weapons that he needed. And that's what McConnell and them is doing now. They filling up the federal court system with, the, with those judges. Every appeal is going to get, get knocked down because we haven't done our due diligence. But that's, not, that's just me running my mouth. Okay, how important do you think it is for, for us to know the party's platform in regards to our voting and everything? 
Well, I mean, it's a part of being a good citizen. So you're, you're doing a little bit of digging. And these are things, these are not sound bites that you can just grab. Uh, you have to do some reading, you have to do some research. You have to ask good questions. When you understand the, the, the platform and at least the ideology of the party that you're representing, it helps you to make more informed and more comprehensive decisions as you think about who you will support as a candidate. And again, oftentimes when you're looking at a single issue, you can't be as informed because you don't understand the larger platform. And so understanding the ideology and the policy of the political, uh, the political uh, party that you, you, you engage takes a little bit of effort, takes a little bit of work. But the payoff is an informed voter. So that when you go into your <clears throat> space to cast your vote, you're doing it with a kind of intellectual heft, a knowledge of the issues, the broader impact of those issues, not just for yourself, but on your environment, on your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, and the schools that they attend, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, in my view, I'm a Democrat for a reason. Uh, not because there are areas of improvement. I'm a Democrat because ideologically, I can align best mm -hmm. with a political um, um, thinking than I can others. And please keep in mind, I I'm not deifying a political party, but I'm saying, and, and this is where I'm at. Listen, choose a side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> choose I mean, this idea of being um, polite is appropriate as good citizens, but you should be passionate about the policies you're going to embrace. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And so understanding uh, whether you're progressive or conservative or uh, 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 centrist, hey, understand the party that you claim to support. That's Good stuff, good stuff. Hey, Kevin Kelly, it's good to see you. And James Hamilton, as always, my good friend, man. It is good to see you. What else I got? What else I got? Now, what has changed since the last election? Anything? Well, the prior, the prior election, you remember that there was a time when you could do straight ticket voting. So you could just check off the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, and you would vote the entire ticket. You can no longer do that. Now you have to circle in all of, darken in all of the oval spaces and you have to vote the entire ballot. You can no longer just do straight ticket voting. Uh, that decision was wrestled with in the legislature here in Pennsylvania and we lost because we don't control the house. And so one of the things that is different is that there is no straight party voting. In addition, now we have the ability to vote by mail. Absentee, no excuse voting. You can now send in your ballot. Uh, it's gotta be postmarked by November 3rd, but now you have the ability to vote uh, without an excuse and mail in your ballot. The other thing I would say too is that, and I've said this before, you do have to begin to think of voting now as a season. It is no longer just a day. And this will be redundant, but I'll risk redundancy. If you're going to vote on November 3rd by going to your local precinct, then plan it, take a chair, take a lunch, take a snack, and prepare to be there a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I've seen a, uh, I've seen a YouTube video with this young lady uh, from down in Texas. Uh, <laughs> she, she, she had the song Blurred Lines in the background. She was talking about she had her chair of snacks and everything. It went viral. It was great. It had a little profanity in it, but it was really, really all right. So now let me ask you another question. For people who have their mail-in ballots in their house right now, do you suggest that they put it in the mailbox or do you suggest they take it down to the ballot box? I think they need to hear this from you. So this is a suggestion uh, because... I've done, this is what Valeria, my wife, has done. Uh, we got our mail, uh, our mail-in ballot sent to us at home. We filled it out. And then my wife drove to voter services and turned hers in. There you go. 
Yeah, I are. drove services and I turned my in. And I accept the reality that someone will say, well, I don't have a car or I don't have transportation. If that in fact is true and you can't get someone to take you there, then get it in the mail as quickly as you can. The good news is that this privilege of being able to vote mail in is in fact a privilege. Take advantage of it, but don't wait. In fact, if your ballot is still sitting around and you haven't filled it out and you haven't voted, do it tonight. Don't watch the debate, fill it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me add to that as well. There is a drop box on the corner of Fifth and Lincoln Highway. It's manned by two ladies. There's a tent there. Drop them ballots all down there and start playing. If you can't get there, give, give Fonz a call, inbox me, and I will get you down there to drop your ballot off. But let's take a moment to say good evening, Pastor Harris. Good to see you. Kenny, Ivan, who's always lucky. It's good to see you this evening. Sister Linda Lavin and Norris. Good to see you, Carolyn Jones. I know you voted. Gloria Hollis, she's on the scene. Hans said this drop box is also located in downtown Coastal Parksburg Libraries. You can also drop your ballot off at those official boxes. Me and the wife, we went out, <laughs> we, we videotaped ourselves going into Westchester and showed off and did that. Oh no, I can't not. Let me see. I'll call you. I'll call you back. They don't know I'm doing my show. Okay, okay. So we talked about that. Now, why should anybody care who the state, state rep is? Why? Why? Well, when it comes to your your local offices, like the state representative, as well as some of your your senate offices, these are people who more directly affect your day to day life. Um, and I'll add this, you can call your state representative, you can call your state senator, and you can get a return call, and the potential to see your state rep or your senator throughout your community exists. Try calling the president. Mm. You, 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 the state representative and your, your state senators are your most direct liaisons of people who respond to some of your issues in a way that very few others will. And so you get a chance to engage them at a different level and the importance of your state representative and your state senator can't be uh, exaggerated. These are people who are direct lines to the issues that have to do with assistance in getting some of your state forms filled out that have to do with set the key cards for seniors. Uh, they offer free notary services in many of their offices, even complaints about state conditions, problems or questions with PennDOT, when you have unemployment compensation issues. And our phone has been ringing off the hook in regards to those kinds of issues. When you have problems with Pennsylvania income taxes, your state rep offices tend to handle those things for constituents. And to your point, not just birth certificates, but including birth certificates, driver's license, et cetera, citations for family members and significant community individuals. These are some of the functions of the state representative that are helpful to the community most directly. I'm gonna tell you why I care who my state rep is. <clears throat> because the games that they're playing, I need a state rep who is uh, who can do that 3D chess that they're playing? Who can mm -hmm. articulate themselves? Who's determined? Mm -hmm. Who's committed? That ain't scared and see all those things. Because I mean, I've been around people who uh, acquiesce their power and everything else when they're around other people, or they 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 want to be a fence straddle and stuff like that. I know you're a fighter. I mean, I mean, you may not come off like ah, but you know how to fight the fight that they're fighting up there. That's why we need you up there. Because everybody else can do the driver's licenses and all that stuff. You got a great team, but we need you in Harrisburg because <laughs> they're doing us dirty. <laughs> Let me have a side too, huh, uh, Fonz. People need to understand that in, until the power shifts in the local state legislature, yeah, all you have is a good fight and a conversation mm -hmm. because until the numbers change, listen to me. We need nine seats. Yeah. We need to gain nine seats to flip 
the power differential in the Pennsylvania State House. And unless we do that, all we can do is fight and advocate. Because at the end of the day, when a vote comes down in a democracy, mm. whoever most votes wins. Mm. Clear this is dry. Down ballot races are so critically important. For those of you who are concerned about increased school funding, those of you who are concerned about grants for community revitalization, those of you who are concerned for projects like this and raising minimum wage issues, we've got a governor who is willing to fight. He needs help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need them numbers. Can't stop, won't stop. Okay, wait, now Barbara Lowe, now Barb, that's pretty good. She said her ballot went in the drop box at the library on Monday and she got she got her information back today. Now my, my screen just jumped off. I don't know why they did that. But anyway, but yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, everything's advocated. Okay, now let's talk about you. It's been two years, you know what I mean? Uh, let's talk about some of them highlights, lowlights and all that stuff. So share a little bit about your two years. Uh, uh, in, your, in your place? Two years have been great. People ask me all the time, they say, well, how do you feel about uh, elected office? And I say to them on a scale from one to 10, it's a 12. Uh, one, it's an honor to be elected to serve in a political office. So period, full stop, it's an honor to be able to serve in that way. And I feel like I've been serving uh, in a capacity for more than 30 years. So this was a natural transition for me. You've heard me say on a number of occasions that when you actually care about people, then you have to get policy because policy shapes people's lives. And so I'm watching and learning every day. One of the things I appreciate about this job is I get to learn something every single day. Now, in light of that, I'm also moving an agenda that I think is consistent with what I hear from constituents. Um, one of the bills that I'm most appreciative of would be 1910, but that was then and this is now. And so right now we're moving forward uh, a few other bills that might not see the light of day before this session ends. If they don't, we'll reinsert them in the next cycle. HB 2483 is a bill that we put together that would have allowed for early counting of ballots so that we could have begun counting ballots here in Chester County two weeks prior to November 3rd. That would have done much to smooth the flow and allow us to get the results quicker. That was HB 2483. Uh, one of the other bills that I'm working hardest on is HB 2289. This is a workers' rights bill. This is called a PRO Act bill. This allows uh, workers to organize, to form unions, to move forward the agendas of collective bargaining. In my view, I think that this is the only way to write the power differential between corporations and the workers. And so these are two pieces of legislation that I'm really, really proud of. The third would be HB 1675, which was a bill designed to freeze school property taxes for people over 65 years of age who had lived in their homes longer than five years. So whether or not these bills ever find their way out of committee and onto the floor is dependent upon who is the majority party in power. Good stuff, good stuff. That's why it's so important. Hey, Brian J. Davis, it looks like you made a decision that you wouldn't be bored by the Eagles in a debate and you came on over to our side. It's good to see you, Brian J. Davis. He's one of my one of my favorite comedians from the school district. Let me see what else we got. Let's talk about COVID-19. Where do we stand as a state and everything else in regards to COVID-19? Well, I think we've done a good job as a state and particularly as a county. If you look at the more popular mass media news cycles, we've done a good job in holding our numbers down, even though some of them are beginning to tick back up. Here's what I'd like people to just be clear about. There is a very real virus that is still on the loose in our world. Anybody who is speaking with the kind of 
naysaying that it's a hoax is insensitive to the fact that more than 200 and 20 plus people have died and completely insensitive to the reality of its impact on black and brown people as well as seniors. And so this is a very real virus that kills people. And wearing a mask, and many Pennsylvanians have done a pretty good job of this, safe and washing our hands is one of the ways we push back on this virus. COVID-19 has taught us much, it's exposed us to some of the inequities in our systems. But as Pennsylvanians, we've been doing pretty good because of the mitigation efforts that were launched early on by this governor and the impact it's had on our Commonwealth has brought us to a place where if we will continue to practice these things, we can go down and we can continue moving in the right direction. Good stuff. Hey, good evening, Pistol Pete Gilchrist. You're all late, but you can catch it on the replay because I will be playing this over and over and over again because what, what we're talking about this evening is really, really important. Let me see. Now, we're getting ready to come to a close. I'm trying to think if I can think of any questions right quick. But you know what? We don't have to spend a lot of time because the quality of the time we've spent is real good stuff. If we can just uh, digest what we have said on this show, I think we'll be just fine. We'll be just fine. Now, but look, before we close, what would you like your constituents to know? I mean, time is yours. I'm not in no hurry. Talk to the viewers out there on anything that's pressing on your mind. Let's be clear about just a couple of things. Number one, a healthy workforce is the only way back to a healthy economy. Uh, we need people to be healthy. We also need people in the state legislature. And this is where you need to be talking to your senators, your state reps. We need people who are frontline workers. Our governor is already prepared to help our small businesses to overcome this. He's there's already been a release in regards to his uh, ending the liquor, uh, the state licensing for liquor that will help small businesses. We need to help small businesses. We need to help the average worker working in those businesses. And so the importance of this election cannot be overstated. We need you to walk, crawl, run, do whatever you have to do to vote. Your vote matters, it counts. And if you wanna turn these things around, then vote blue. And let's turn this Commonwealth back into the hands of people who are much more concerned with your well-being than they own their own personal self-aggrandizement. And I approve that message. <laughs> vote like your rights depend on it. Look, I wanna say thank you there, State Rep. Damn way, well. thank you for allowing allowing me to just talk to you and chat with you in front of our viewers and everything. It's been great. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I'm just so honored. And I'm just, I'm just hope that everybody has get, gotten something out of this. Don't forget to share this. This is really, really important. Let's use social media for the good and, and let people know the good news. And uh, so we can share and be on one accord. Now, look, before I let him go, uh, there is an initiative uh, that's being headed by Miss Arvilla Hunt down at Hunt's Funeral Home. We are trying to get 200 turkeys to feed 200 families on November the 19th. So if you can't get in touch with her, inbox me. I've already sent mass emails out to all the volunteers that I've been involved with, and we want to get them 200 turkeys. Right now, we have a commitment for about 56. I think I just got 10 over the last 45 minutes. Let's get 200 and feed these families out here. Hey, look, I got to go. I got to go, man. Look, I want y'all to all remember that Coastville is rising. Uh, Brother Fonz, my wife, we love y'all. And remember, man, seriously, Black lives do matter. Peace out. Thank you, Fonz. Bless you, man. Thank you, brother. All right, man.